Hey, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna talk about Top 5 Best Mirrorless Camera. Starting at number 5. Canon EOS R7. The Canon EOS R7 is like one of the camera giant's full-frame EOS R cameras, only with a smaller APS-C sensor. For the price, it's impressively powerful, particularly if you're a fan of shooting wildlife or sports scenes. That's because it boasts 15 frames per second burst speeds, or 30 frames per second if you switch to the electronic shutter. Our tests found that the EOS R7 can indeed hit these speeds, though you don't get the deep buffers found on full-frame siblings like the EOS R6, so it can't sustain those speeds for quite as long. Beyond rattling off frames of speeding animals, the EOS R7 offers comfortable handling, Canon's latest subject tracking autofocus system and and dual UHS-2 card slots, making it a camera that will also tempt Pro EOS R series fans as a second body. The only downside? Canon has so far only made two native lenses for the EOS R7's APS-C sensor. More should be en route, though, and you can always mount existing RF lenses or adapt older EF lenses from Canon's DSLRs while you wait. Coming at number 4. Panasonic Lumix. The Panasonic Lumix S5 II is a worthy successor to one of our favorite video cameras, the S5. Like the S5, the S5 II is ticketed as a hybrid, but video is where it excels. In our tests, we found its 6K 30P footage rich and detailed, with wide dynamic range. Its video chops are bolstered by 10-bit recording across almost all resolutions, plus the ability to record uncropped footage using the sensor's full 3 to 2 aspect ratio useful for cropping content. We also found it sturdy yet comfortable to handle during testing. Happily, its compact design doesn't compromise the physical controls. The S5 II is Panasonic's first mirrorless camera with phase detection AF for video. Combined with effective image stabilization, we found it produces sharp, stable video even when shooting handheld, although the 1.5x crop on 4K 60p video is a shame. The Panasonic Lumix GH6 is a more travel-friendly video powerhouse with a micro four-thirds sensor, while serious videographers will be drawn by the Lumix S5 IIX. Nevertheless, the S5 II is a fantastic full-frame hybrid for high-quality video. At number 3. Sony A7RV. At 61MP, the Sony A7RV has the same class-leading resolution as the A7R4 before it. But thanks to a new sensor and powerful Bion's XR processing engine, our review found that the A7RV is a better camera overall. Paired with high-quality optics and up to 8 stops of image stabilization, we found it capable of capturing outstanding detail. We found image quality to be excellent when shooting detailed subjects, making the A7RV a fantastic choice for landscape or studio pros. In our tests, its AI-powered real-time recognition AF wasn't foolproof, but it could reliably lock onto a range of subjects, working particularly well with people even in wider scenes. Its articulating touchscreen provides useful flexibility when it comes to framing, while the EVF is as sharp here as on the A7S III. If you want a high-spec full-frame powerhouse and don't mind paying for it, the A7RV is a serious step up from its predecessor. But if you can't afford the best glass, want to shoot slow mo 4K video or simply don't need such high resolution, you might find better value in the A7 IV. Number 2 of my list. Canon EOS R10. There are cheaper mirrorless camera for beginners, but none that can match the versatility of the Canon EOS R10. From our tests, two features set the Canon EOS R10 apart for learners, its 15 frames per second burst shooting rate and powerful subject tracking autofocus, which operates across 651 AF points. These two features combine to make the R10 a fantastic performer in a range of scenarios, particularly when subjects are fast moving. We found it particularly good at tracking the eyes of subjects. It's not a perfect camera for beginners, we found the EVF a little small and also noted the lack of image stabilization, a feature which is offered on rivals like the Olympus OMD EM10 Mark IV, below. 
Then again, we also found that the R10's low weight and deep grip make it a forgiving camera for novices to use. We also noted positively in our review the helpful presence of an AF joystick. The only major drawback is the lack of native lenses currently available for Canon's RF mount. In all other respects, the R10 is a versatile option for photographers getting started. And number 1. Sony A7 IV. The Sony A7 IV is a truly modern hybrid camera. It's overkill for beginners and more expensive than its stills-focused competition, but it's also a versatile workhorse for anyone who want to shoot a mixture of photos and video. In our tests, we found the A7 IV to have class-leading autofocus skills, although Sony has since launched the pricier A7 RV with its new AI autofocus chip and improved subject detection. Its buffer depth proved seemingly endless as well, meaning the camera can almost indefinitely maintain its maximum burst speeds. When using a CFX Express card, it swallowed 9 frames per second for over a minute, or 6 to 7 frames per second when continuously shooting RAW. The A7 IV's new 33MP full-frame sensor doesn't dramatically improve image quality over the A7 III, the higher resolution also means fairly prevalent noise above ISO 6400, and there's a heavy crop on 4K footage. A price bump means it no longer occupies the same entry-level price bracket as its popular predecessor either, but upgrades like 10-bit video and a Bion's XR processor make it a much more powerful option. As a complete package, the Sony A7 IV is a solid all-rounder which could be the only mirrorless camera you'll ever need. Check out this video description for latest price and more informations. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe and stay tuned.